dog decided to sit right behind me so I can't move backwards. Hmm. I see you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today is the first day of the Animal Crossing Rivathon. <laughs> Wait for it. I have this uh, saved from Carnival because <laughs> I didn't get the chance to <laughs> use it during the Carnival. Okay. I thought we could start with my TPR because there are some prompts for this readathon and I have them written here in my notebook so I'm going to start now. <laughs> First prompt is Resetti. Don't forget to save. Read a book of your choice while using a bookmark. And for this I chose uh, uh, Ghost of the Shadow Hunter Market. I think it's called like that in English because in Italian it's called uh, Fantasmi del Mercato delle Ombre Shadow Hunters. So it has beautiful picture inside it and it's a series of novellas of the Shadow Hunter world. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a very cool picture. <laughs> Second prompt KK Slider. Listen to an audiobook or read a book that has musical elements. And for this I chose a manga because, you know, it's very quick to read. It's called Become You. It's from the uh, same author as Orange. It talks about two high school students who are very passionate about music, but for one of them his room is slipping away and then he meets the other one and, you know, things start to happen as they're friendship progress and it's all about music uh, as you can maybe see I don't know the lighting is very weird <laughs> uh, he has a guitar and the drawings the drawings third prompt able sister read a book with a strong family themes and for that I chose I don't remember what I chose Wait. for that I chose umami by Lyle how do you pronounce it? Laia Jufreza? Laia Jufreza? Uh, I have no idea and I hope I'm not butchering it. Uh, this has kind of a mysterious premise. Um, apparently the protagonist is a girl here. in Mexico City that is tending her garden and she listens to her neighbors and there are a lot of questions, a lot of mysteries, and apparently it's a very delicate book. So I am looking forward to this one. Fourth from Tom Nook. Read a book that you have recently purchased or checked out of the library. Uh, for this I chose, this is the Italian only book and it's called Ci vediamo domani se non piove by the author is called Joan Bonny who I thought was an American author, but apparently it's not. It's an, this is Italian, and for what I gathered, it's an enemies to lovers, because it talks about a young woman who has to uh, prepare for an art gallery, and she dreams about true love and the perfect man. But when it's the day the first day of the gallery, it's opening night, there's a man who goes around saying, oh, this is shit, this is so ugly. And the story develops from there because she cannot take it. Fifth prompt, Animal Crossing GameCube. Read a book that has been on your TBR the longest or reread an old favorite. Uh, for this, I chose something that has been on my TPR for a very long time, and it's Snot Girl. Uh, I'll insert the picture right here, I because I right have here. it on my computer. Uh, I have no idea what it talks about, I forgot, and I don't want to know, because the art style is so weird, so incredibly weird, uh, but I love weird things and I want to be surprised. The bonus prompt is Isabel. Read one of the host choices and I chose Amy's choice 
from uh, uh, in book life uh, i link everything down below and i choose oh my god the reflection is serious uh, a pinch of magic i have it on my you know e-reader this is my cobo <laughs> apparently no one has a cobo but it's you know very efficient this is very very old um again i have no idea what this talks about i it's it's a magical book i believe it's middle grade i'm not too sure but it has been a long time since i've read the middle grade book and i used to when i was you know younger i used to love them and i hope i can rekindle my love to them okay this was everything uh the readathon starts now so i'll start reading <laughs> So I have to go to the dentist and I'm going to uh, use my pretty book tote and I am bringing with me uh, Become You. So let's see if I like get to read some of this bad boy while I wait for my dentist. <laughs> just returned from the dentist and I wash my hands because in this trying times it's very important to wash your hands so uh, please do please wash your hands when I was at the dentist since I arrived half an hour earlier because I got the time mixed up uh, <laughs> I finished become you volume one and it was honestly <laughs> I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, of course, it's five stars. Um, this was much more introspective than I was anticipating. Um, yes, it talks about music, about passion, but also about talent versus perseverance. Uh, the main character is not very good with his guitar, but he loves music so much and he practices a lot. And the other one is a one spin genius. He was amazing at playing the piano and then he stopped. And now he's a, an introvert. He doesn't talk to his peers. He is very like somber, uh, is that the word? Uh, and then they form an unlikely friendship and since I am a musician, I play the flute. I go to a music academy in my spare time. It, it's not what I do at university, but it's uh, one, of, one of my passion in life. And I do it competitively. I do competitions. Uh, the, they talking about what it's like to be talented versus uh, what it's like to be someone who just practices a lot and it it brings you know it was a very interesting conversation and one that's very close to home because I am someone who's not very naturally talented uh, I have an ear for music but that's about it my fingers are very slow on the flute uh, this story resonated with me very much and also there's um, the main character he is a very like positive person he speaks his feelings out he cries he laughs i love that boys who cry yes uh but also he says things like uh being kind and being positive is very tough it's not like you are just positive and nothing gets to you no it's very tough it's very mentally draining being positive but if you push through then it's worth it uh, it also talks about how the world is very cruel, especially for artists and for creative people. Uh, but when you realize that without this cruel world, this, without pain and the pain of going through tough times, you can't really recognize kindness. So 
the main character through his pain and his painful experiences can recognize the kindness of his friendship with the other main character and uh, one of his childhood friends is very uh, you know cheerful but also has secrets uh, it's very much about secrets and your past how it affects your life afterwards so uh, please pick it up it's very very good I loved it okay now I think I will start something on the same like wavelength very introspective I think I will start Oh, mommy. <laughs> so I will update you then. Okay, uh, I reapplied my lipsticks uh, and now we're getting ready to go out to take out my dog and hopefully get a little reading done on the boat. So I brought my book. Uh, wish me luck that I don't get seasick. Okay, I am back from my walk with my dog and now I promised my mother that I would paint something for the walls because uh, we had a very big carpet hanging on the wall. Yes, we do that uh, because the, the walls in the kitchen are very big and very white. And she said, well, you have some paint, you have some canvas, can you paint me something? So I'm going to do just that. Good morning campers, uh, it's currently 8 a.m. and I'm waiting for my classes to start because because of the coronavirus we're taking online classes at university and someone wants to look out the window even though it's very dangerous because there's water down there. Huh. <laughs> He's keeping me company since we're all alone. So. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes. See. <laughs> So, um, needless to say, this is my greatest artwork of life. Uh, I will never top this. And... <laughs> this is going into my entry hall.
Hello. Okay. Good morning, people. Uh, I just had my hydraulic construction lesson uh, via computer and it was, well, I am ready for the coronavirus to end and to see my friends and to go to classes normally because it's okay, but I don't love it at all. Uh, yesterday I finished, well actually this morning actually, yeah, I finished Umami and I am conflicted. I will probably get this book three and a half stars, I think. Uh, as I said, I am very conflicted because this was written beautifully. It's that writing of less is more, so uh, there are not many like flowery sentences, but it's very effective, very like introspective, uh, uh, just like Become You, but in a different way. Um, the synopsis lied to me because it said there was only one protagonist, and the girl I talked about before in my TBR. Uh, was the least talked about. There's a retired professor whose wife passed away due to cancer and now he's all alone with uh, his reborn babies. There are like dolls for people who can have children. Uh, it was weird but also uh, very interesting because this was a professor who dedicated his life to the umami. So uh, there is sweet, sour, and the other one that I can't remember how to say in English. Uh, salty, stuff like that. And then there is the fifth one that it's umami. So rich, delicious, something that can't really be described. And he's a professor, he taught, now he's retired. Then there is, I believe, um, another girl that lives in this like uh, community of houses. Uh, that is, uh, she has a problem like an eating disorder. It's not addressed uh, with the name, but she has an eating disorder. That lives there, and she loves art, but she doesn't paint much. But she loves uh, inventing new names. Color, but marriage words like emotions and colors. And then there's the family of the little girl whose uh, sister passed away due to drowning. And you get some perspective of the little girl before she drowned. Uh, it's written out of order. Um, so you go back and forth between the death of the little girl before and after. And it's just li like a slice of life literally a slice of life of these characters who lives in this community and if you're interested in books that talk about um, Mexican heritage this is a good one to start because there's there are a lot of uh, Mexican words and how they view people from outside uh, they call them gringos uh, of course like white people um, it was interesting I have to say, there was only one thing that made me uncomfortable and it was a uh, very, very, very young girls talking about sexual stuff, which was, you know, sexual awakening is a thing that has to be talked about, like, uh, we are discovering our bodies when we are young, but these, these girls were very, very young and it was kind of uncomfortable. Uh, but other than that, I will definitely read something else from this author because she wrote this beautifully. Uh, I can understand why she uh, won words, so uh, definitely that. Uh, now I think I'm going to move to something more uh, hefty. Uh, I think I will move to uh, Ghost of the Shadow Market. Uh, last time I said Ghost of the Shadow Hunters Market. No, it's Ghost of the Shadow Market. Yes. <laughs> so 
I'm waiting for my technical like, urban planning lesson to start but it's super lagging and it's not connecting so uh, I'm sneaking so I'm ready in so far so good okay fortunately my mother called and she wants to meet up uh, to take out the dog so I will get a chance to read outside because it's a very pretty sunny day and it'd be a shame so I'll update you later